Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Hi. Thanks for having me. My name is Dan Salvato. I am a game designer. Um, and with me, I have Walsk, who at this point probably doesn't need much of an introduction. He's been in, like, probably about 50% of the events <laughs> going on <laughs> in the background. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Um, I don't need sleep. Yeah, but I, I wanted to have Walsk here because um, uh, we've been buddies for a while, and um, he's going to help me a little bit with this presentation. Um, I'm going to play through it first, and then we're going to switch over to uh, switch over to Walsh so he can play while I talk about it a little bit. Um, I've been working on this for, I would say, about a year now in my spare time. Um, and maybe if you follow me like on social media, I, you may have seen me post about it every now and then. Um, it is an original game. It's not a fan game. Um, so I'm not really sure why they let me in this event in the first place. <laughs> it's probably because I beat like half of Nang. Um, <laughs> but begrudgingly. Yeah. But actually the reason that I wanted to kind of premiere this in quotes, like it's not exactly secret. The reason I wanted to show it off here was that, um, this was inspired by, by you, the fan game community. Um, despite it being an original game, uh, I think you'll see soon enough what I mean. Um, but aside from that, in making this game, I'm also, you could say, achieving what has been a lifelong dream of mine, which sounds really dramatic. I guess it kind of is. Um, but let me explain. Uh, the game, the game that I'm about to show you is not a modern PC game. This game is made for the Commodore Amiga, uh, which is a system that came out in 1985. Um, and for those of you who are familiar with Amiga, uh, this is an OCS machine, um, targeting the Amiga 500, uh, with the expansion. Um, yeah, the entire thing is coded in assembly language. And uh, I've always wanted to make a game for Amiga. I've always been kind of an Amiga fanboy. Uh, it was the first computer I ever had, and so I um, always thought it was a really cool machine. So I finally got to work on it um, based on an idea that I had um, from being you know, a tangential part of the fan game community. Uh, so I would like to show that to you. Um, so I'm going to play through the initial demo. Um, for that, I'm just going to like mute the mic and webcam and everything to make it, I don't know, more dramatic or whatever. Um, and then we will return and um, I'll talk a little bit more about the game, let Walsk play it. Uh, so that's the plan. Uh, yeah, is everyone hyped for this or what? Oh, the last thing that I want to mention is this is far from complete. Uh, this is like the very first like initial demo that I put together specifically for this marathon. Uh, the actual release of this game is years out. Um, so that's that's the last thing I want to mention, just to taper the expectations a little bit. Uh, but that's all. I'll get started now. Here we go.
I'm back. Six hits, that's kind of mediocre, but <laughs> my hands were shaking the whole time. And also this is just like not easy. <laughs> but I guess in a second we're going to see how Wolsk does. Thanks everybody for the claps, I really appreciate it. I hope you liked it. I've been working really hard on this. Um, I want to. I, I saw that there are a lot of my friends in the chat. I want to give a shout out to all of you. Thanks so much for coming here and checking out my my demo. Um, and if anyone is here uh, from the Amiga community as well, then uh, thank you for joining. Really appreciate you coming. Um, really appreciate all the support that you've given me as well. Um, it's been really great having you around to. Uh, chat and ask questions and all of that. So, yeah, just thank you, everybody. Really appreciate you all. Um, and let's say welcome back to Walsk. Hello again. Hi. <laughs> Dan, you're so dramatic. <laughs> I, I can't help it, man. <laughs> if you've if, if you spent as much time as I did working on this, then you'd probably be kind of dramatic, too to be fair yeah i mean you're super passionate about the old console things you you tell me about it all the time have for a long time so yeah i know yeah thank you yeah walsk is typically for whatever reason he ends up being like i don't know sort of like my hype guy when i'm working on something i just, I just like <laughs> chat him up and send him random stuff and he like gives me hype and motivation and encouragement and all that um and that, that was the same for this game as well i haven't shown all that many people like clips of this game while i was working on it but um but I showed Walsk clips and took suggestions for like attacks. Um, the sphere is there because of him. <laughs> um, Boy, is it? Yeah. You even said at first they weren't sure you could do it, but you actually like tried to figure out how to make it work. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so this this project does not have a release date currently. I anticipate that it's probably going to be several years before it gets close to release. Um, it is a very long term project. Um, like I said, what you saw is what I have spent about a year working on so far, and that's not that's not about the content of the game. That's the game engine. Um, you know, every like everything had to be built from scratch because it's assembly language, just hitting the bare metal. So, um, so I spent a long time working on the game engine, and the the attacks that you saw were um, were attacks that I created not really for like game design purposes but in order to work on the game engine basically so every attack was kind of had like a new feature of the of the game engine that i was working on in order to make that possible um and then i sort of just compiled the best of those uh for this demo uh, and that's what we saw here um but yeah how about we see if we can get this switched over to walsk so walsk can kind of play it in the background while we continue talking about the game Sure thing. Let me just give me a few minutes, or like a minute or two. Sure. Time is. I tried my best not to like watch along, so it's it's pretty much going to be blind outside of the things that you've sent me and shown me. Yeah. Um. You're probably going to have a bad time. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. Yeah. Like the, these attacks were not really designed to be extremely fair or balanced. Like I said, because they were designed for making the game engine. <laughs> not necessarily for like you know like good gameplay uh, I, I think some of them are still fun but like the other ones are are a little bit silly um uh yeah but but while we're waiting for that um i guess to talk a little bit more about the platform this is running on um because a lot of you are probably not familiar with the amiga um it was released by commodore in 1985 uh i'm sure more of you have heard of the commodore 64 um uh the amiga came after and um, what you, I mean, what you saw is what the Amiga is capable of. It's an absolutely incredible machine for the time. Um, it has a 7 megahertz CPU, and the machine I'm targeting has 1 megabyte of RAM. Um, the Amiga also has like a dedicated GPU, basically, uh, without getting too much into it. Uh, that's that's like why a lot of what you saw was possible in the first place for a system that is that is uh, this old. Um, and by the way, since we're like switching to Walsk's audio here, 
Um, unless you didn't switch over to Walsh Audio yet, I'm not sure. Uh, about to but, switch over, so yeah, it's it's gonna okay. be a bit weird on stream for a while while I, I get this dialed in. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll remain silent for a second. My webcam, I'm, I'm probably just gonna turn off my webcam because it's gonna be out of sync, like with Walsh's stream. Uh, so I'll turn off my webcam and you can let me know when the audio is switched over. Okay, and then it's gonna be switched over. And Dan, right about now, is there a way to like slightly boost your mic in uh, Discord? Just well, it's bit. your audio now, Walsk. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So here is here is me slightly worse quality than before. All right, that's good. Solid. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, so you can just uh, get through this opening cutscene, and uh, and give it a shot. But while you get through that, um. Um. Yeah, I, I wanted to um, talk a little bit about the capabilities of the Amiga so you can better understand what you're seeing. Um, um, the total color palette is 4,096 colors, which is, again, absolutely ridiculous for 1985. Um, but you can basically have, in like a video game scenario, you can basically have up to 32 colors on screen. Um, it starts to get complicated pretty quickly because uh, the way that the colors are defined um, and the way that the graphics are done is not what you would expect. Um, we're used to thinking about graphics in terms of what they call chunky graphics, where it's like one pixel is just like you get one color per pixel. You know, if it's if it's a palette, then it's like each pixel defines a color. Um, or if it's full RGB, then each pixel is just separate RGB values. Um, the Amiga uses planar graphics uh, and that works by layering bit planes on top of each other and it's it's not exactly how it works but you can kind of think of it as layering transparent sheets on top of each other and so what I'm doing is I have three bit planes for the background so that's eight colors in total and then I have one additional bit plane for the attacks um, so that's an additional eight colors but it's like layered on top of the background so I usually use kind of like this transparent color effect because you can't have like a full unique eight colors um, and then the last 16 colors in the palette are just reserved for the sprites, so for the characters basically, um, and uh, like whatever attacks that they're using. Um, so that's kind of how the colors are broken down. But the reason that um, the reason that I was inspired to make this game in the first place was I wanted to I wanted to take advantage of the Amiga having planar graphics. Um, I, I see like a lot of Amiga games, classic and modern ones, that um, try to sort of emulate chunky graphics because it's very colorful and typically looks nice, but the Amiga is not always as good at that. I really wanted to look at the Amiga's bit planes as like a unique opportunity to make something really cool that other systems would not be able to do. Um, and I decided that if you just have one, if you have this layer of attacks on one bit plane, that means that each pixel on the attack layer is one bit. It's either a one or a zero. So that means a single byte is going to be eight of those pixels. And that means drawing them is going to be very, very fast compared to like a full on chunky graphics. Uh, and that is how I'm able to draw, you know, hundreds of objects and particles on screen every single frame. Um, taking advantage of those bit planes and there being only one single bit per pixel so you can update it uh, very very quickly because of that um, Wells is actually doing quite good <laughs> so far I, I have to say yeah I'm I've gotten hit quite a bit but you know it is what it is I didn't notice um, that the girl was falling for a while oh okay yeah <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, the, uh, kind of the, the, like, the meteor shower attack and, like, this attack, the firework attack, are definitely the most RNG heavy. Sometimes, like, sometimes I just absolutely breeze through them, and other times I take, like, three hits on each attack. It's just pretty nuts. Um, oh yeah, I also, I also did the music. Um, I, I basically just needed something for the demo. Uh, so I put it together, but I'm talking to I'm talking to some music composers in order to do the music for the final game. Um, the Amiga's audio is um, substantially more tough to work with than the graphics uh, because you only have four audio channels, and so I try to use three of them for the music and then one of them for the sound effects. Um, but even that's like kind of limited. Um, 
I think that on a platform like NES, for instance, which I believe also has four audio channels, that kind of works fine, because when like the sound effects interrupt the music layers, they're all pulse waves anyway, so it like it still so kind of sounds okay when they uh, when the music gets interrupted by sound effects, but this has like full PCM wave audio, um, and so when the music is getting interrupted by sound effects, it sounds really janky, and so and, and when the sound effects get interrupted by each other, it also sounds janky. So it's really hard to kind of divide four audio channels between the music and sound effects, um, and like compose something nice and have uh, and have like good sound effects. You have to think about making making sound effects that are okay to get cut off by other sounds and thinking about the priorities of the sound effects. Um, it, it's pretty tough and I only just started with the audio design recently. It was the la pretty much the last thing that I did for this demo. Um, so that is where I have the most to learn at this point, I think. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you uh, enjoying what I put together for that. Music's jamming. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I, I see that some people are like recognizing that attack from my I Wanna Maker level, like the Bad Apple level that I made. Um, it, it was kind of a natural fit, I just, I liked that attack in the first place and it gave me an opportunity to do something cool with the colors. Um, there is, there's a lot of really neat opportunity to do like cool color effects uh, because of the way that bit planes work once again. So you can have inverted colors, transparent looking colors. Um, one of the things that I coded that you see in the sphere attack at the end is um, is converting um, HSV, hue, saturation, and value to RGB uh, so that you can just uh, you can like slide around the hue and just get these really cool like rainbow effects or, or whatever um, without all that much effort and that's a part of the game engine now. Um, but again, that was a bit of a later addition, uh, like these color effects, and so most of the attacks, like, I haven't played with it that much yet, but there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with, uh, with the colors. Um, yeah, so, one, uh, uh, one, one important limitation when it comes to retro systems is uh, pretty much, you could say that you, the unique capabilities of almost every retro system is based around the fact that there is simply not enough... The systems are not powerful enough to fully redraw the entire screen every single frame. And that's true for, you know, Amiga, NES, um, you know, even, like, all the 16-bit consoles. They, they, they just can't really, like, they can't redraw the entire screen at a full 60 FPS. And so they have techniques like finding tiles and letting special chips on the hardware, like... You know, save parts of the screen uh, to draw every frame. You know, define sprites, just like here's the graphic and here's the position, and then there's a chip on the hardware that like draws the sprite as the screen is being displayed. Um, and that is that is the case. You know, for for this game as well, I'm only fully clearing and redrawing that one bit plane every frame, and it's fast enough to do that because, like I said, the Amiga has a GPU um, that is able to handle that in parallel with the CPU. And if that sounds really nuts for a system made in 1985, that's because it really is. Um, I can talk a little bit more about that as well. By the way, Wolsk, um, if you hit F12, okay. then it should bring up it should bring up like the emulator menu, and you can soft reset the machine. Got it. I was just about to ask that. <laughs> um, and once you get back to the white screen, if you hold jump and hit fire, then. Um, if you hold jump and hit fire instead of just hitting fire, then it skips the intro and all the text boxes. Um, so that you can just reset more quickly. I potentially messed up. Try that again. No, I think you're good. Am I good? Oh wait, I wasn't looking. It doesn't skip the whole intro, just like the, the title cards. Got it. Uh, does she say something else if you manage to do a hitless? Yes. But I've only ever done it hitless twice. <laughs> And those were both like earlier today. Um, it's not easy to do. <laughs> so, um, like as much as I know you're like an absolute god gamer, Walsk, but we'll just have to see if if you're able to um, if you're able to pull that off in the next eight minutes or so. Well, the hardest part for me is getting used to the fact that all the jumps are the same height. Well, double jump actually seems to be higher than the single jump, maybe. 
Uh, they're the same height. Okay. Oh, that's true. That's that's very different from I Want to Be the Guy fan games. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm probably gonna I'm I'm probably gonna leave that as is. I I mean anything can change, but uh, since like this is more inspired by Infinite Jump in the first place, you know what I mean. Uh, so I'm probably just gonna keep that the way that it is. Um, but one of the one of the plans for one of the plans for um, the gameplay is that with each opponent you defeat, um, you will be able to pick up like a small augmentation to your abilities. So whether it's like a like a slight a slight buff to your movement or like a slight buff to your attack or maybe a different attack altogether, um, and then going into the next fight, you'll be able to equip one of those. And I want each of the, th the fights to kind of be themed around, like, the character. And so there's going to be a set of attacks that's sort of themed around that, and you'll be able to, like, look at your, kind of your arsenal of abilities and, and try to pick an equipment that will best suit you for that upcoming fight. Um, but that's very far down the line, of course. There's still, like, a lot of work to do on the game engine itself. Um, and, and I'm also like happy to answer any questions as well. You know, if people have questions about um, like the hardware it's running on, technical questions, um, or game design related questions, then I would be happy to answer as well. Oh yeah, and don't forget that um, after your last jump, you can you get like a fifth little hover as well. That you can use. I end, I actually end up using it quite a bit. You can like control your fall a little bit. It's it's like it's like um yeah you get those four jumps and then you get a fifth one that's just a zero height jump so it like breaks your fall a little bit. Uh, is a plan to have HP or infinite health in the final version? Um, I'm thinking I'll probably have difficulty settings, but I want to design the game around one hit deaths. Uh, as as like the main the main way of playing. So I haven't thought strongly about like what different kinds of difficulty settings there might be, like whether it's you have more than one HP going in or you have a certain amount of HP like per attack or something like that. But I really want just the main the main gameplay to be uh, one hit death. So you have to one shot the whole boss fight. Oh my God, this fear is so hard. You're actually going through Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the the movement on it is kind of janky, and it like takes, especially this part when it's like when when the dots are moving horizontally, it's like takes a while to get used to. It's an improvement of ten. I just need to do that twice, um, and then I get negative one. <laughs> um. So so I mean, the entire boss fight, you would have one HP. And if you get hit once, then you would have to go back to the beginning of the boss fight, uh, similar to what you've seen in most fan games. Um, the way that the way that the GPU works in the Amiga is well. There's actually several things going on. So there's the main CPU. There's uh, the coprocessor. Uh, known as the copper for short and the copper has like a much smaller set of instructions where you can tell the hardware to like perform perform uh, certain tasks like at different points in the frame um, so if you want to like change I don't know the color palette halfway down the frame uh, or or even or even like change the color palette every single scan line you could technically do that with the copper uh, when you see the text box appear at the top of the screen, that's that's an example of the copper kicking in and choosing like an arbitrary point down the screen to tell the hardware, uh, hey, switch over to this like separate video bitmap region and redefine all the colors. So that's how I have like a really colorful character portrait up at the top in the text box, um, which has maybe like 20 colors on its own, and then that gets cut off and um, the copper switches over to the main video feed that has its own color palette as well. Uh, so the copper's really good at doing stuff like that. Um, but then the main the main graphics drawing work is done by uh, the Blitter, as it's called. The Blitter is really, really good at quickly copying regions of memory around. 
So that means that I have all these different um, like s sprites or, or graphics for the attacks, like the different sized balls and like other shapes uh, sitting in memory. And when it's time to draw them to the screen, I can tell the blitter, like take, take this uh, region of memory that has this image in it and copy it over to this region of the screen. And the blitter says okay and starts doing that while the CPU is free to continue moving on and, and like grabbing the data for the position in the next object, for example. Uh, same with clearing the screen. Uh, once the frame is over and the, and the screen with all the and, and the uh, bit plane with all the attacks needs to be cleared, I can tell the copper to start doing that, and the copper just starts clearing the screen without, uh, without like forcing the CPU to have to do all that work. Um, there are trade-offs. I'm not really like getting too technically into it <laughs> during during this. Um, like the CPU goes slower while blitz are happening, um, but I would say that like. I don't know, you could call this, like, you know, this is, like, like the point of this demo was for me to flex in the first place, I guess, but this is as much a flex, I think, for the Amiga and what the Amiga is capable of, and, you know, it really shows why I love the machine so much. Um, I am really passionate about um, getting, getting more out of the retro machines that we love, whether it's Amiga or NES or... I don't know, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Commodore 64, the list goes on. You know, I probably, like, one of those is probably a lot of people's favorite console that I just named. And people are still making games for these consoles. And it's a lot easier than we think to get into making these games nowadays. Oftentimes, like in the case of Amiga, Commodore 64, NES, there are literally extensions for VS Code that, that let you uh, just instantly set up a development environment and start writing code uh, for these systems. It's really incredible. And because we have emulators, um, we have uh, a huge wealth of information about these systems. Of course, we have the internet, we have tutorials. Um, we have like modern coding tools. Um, you can write code and test it within seconds uh, just by booting up an emulator and, and testing with a debugger. Um, we, have, we have so much more than people had in the 80s and early 90s when making games for these systems. Oh, we typically don't have deadlines either. That's another big one. And so with all of that, we can do really, really incredible things and make incredible games for these systems that people only could have ever dreamed of a few decades ago. Um, so it's really possible nowadays to take these old systems and breathe new life into them, apply modern game design principles, and make something really, really cool. Um, and I've wanted to do that with Amiga for the longest time. I finally am. And if any of you are curious about doing this, um, whether it's for Amiga or more likely one of your other favorite consoles like NES, um, whatever it may be, you should be able to find just so many resources online on kind of how to code for these, how to get started. Um, it is a little bit tricky because you're typically working in assembly language, but um, depending on what system you're looking at, oftentimes there are like really, really good YouTube tutorial videos that can ease you into it, even if you don't have all that much coding experience. Um, so I don't, I don't want this to be just me. You know, I, I want to just draw more attention to this passion of mine in general, and you know, hopefully uh, help people find their own interest in it by just showing you that it exists in the first place, and people are are making new things for these old old systems. Um, and for that, you know, that's probably the reason that I'm most glad to be able to share this with you. Just in case, if, there, if there's just like one person who I'm able to kind of ignite that passion, you start looking into it, uh, maybe you start making something cool as well, and we just keep keep these old systems alive and continue, have them, have them continue to be our favorite systems, and maybe the favorite systems of uh, future gamers as well, then I think that's the most important thing to me. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's probably it. I wanted to keep this pretty short because the demo is short um, and it looks like we're about on time there. Um, so that's kind of my last thought. But um, I, again, super appreciate uh, the event having me and allowing me to showcase it here um, because the fan game community just, just means a lot to me and they're the reason that I was inspired to make this game in the first place. Um, and all of you who took interest in this, I really appreciate you as well. It just feels so great to be able to share this passion of mine with everybody. Um, and if you want to 
uh, learn a little bit more about the development, the technical side of things. Um, I think I'm probably going to start making YouTube videos that talk a little bit about this and, you know, the way that I pulled off some of these, you know, some of the attacks and, and certain things that the game engine can do. Um, so feel free to follow me on YouTube or Twitter if you want to, um, you know, get a little updates on the development, learn a little bit more about uh, the game and the Amiga. Um, I would love to be able to continue sharing this with you. But um, I think that's probably going to be all for me, um, as long as we can get a confirmation from like one of the hosts that it is in fact, our, our time is in fact up. If not, then I could just like keep stalling by talking about more random stuff. But, um, oh, whoops. Uh, yeah, same YouTube URL. It's youtube.com slash Dan Salvato. Yeah, I, I was kind of busy setting up the next run, but... Uh, oh, that's all right. You, you are at 33 minutes now, so it's probably... It's probably time to cut you off, so... Sure. Yeah, no, yeah, no problem. Um, I'm happy to call it here. Um, again, thank you, everybody. I've been loving Fan Game Marathon so far. Can't wait to see what's coming up next. The last game was absolutely incredible. <laughs> One of the craziest things that I've ever seen. Um, so, you know, hope you join me in, in uh, watching the rest of the event, and we'll have a great time together. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Walsk, as well, for, for playing and, and um, you know, and checking this out with me. Yeah, of course. It was a ton of fun. Wow, that was worse than the last one. I'm sad. <laughs> That's all right. Let's just see the hit count and then we'll call it. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you around. Yeah. And if you enjoyed the last run, which was the I Want to Be the Guy Blind Adventure, then make sure to check out the next run, which is the Super Mario 64 Blind Adventure. Uh, we'll be there in just a bit.